Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The town of Hinton respectfully acknowledges that it is located on the First Peoples' traditional lands. We recognize this traditional territory to show respect and understanding to those who walk this land since time immemorial. Today, we uphold our ongoing responsibility to work together in the spirit of the intent of the treaties with all the First Peoples and nations that call this place home. The town expresses gratitude for the opportunity to build a better community on these sacred lands for generations to come. And with that, I will call the meeting to order for the regular council meeting of April the 4th, 2023. And we will begin with the adoption of the agenda. Council, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Seeing none, administration? Nothing from administration. Right, thank you very much. Council? Councillor Haas. I'd like to move that we adopt the agenda for April 4th, 2023, please. Thank you very much. Council, any questions or discussions? Seeing none, we'll, uh, we'll look to our electronic voting. And we will call that to question that council adopt the agenda as presented. All those in favor, please indicate. Sorry? Oh, then we'll do, uh, council, we'll just do this uh, traditionally for the agenda. All those in favor, please indicate. And that is carried unanimously. And with that, we will move on to the council minutes for adoption for the regular council meeting of March 21st and the Committee of the Whole for March 28th. Council, any questions? Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry, one second, Councillor Race. There you go, you're good. Good. I would like to move that we adopt the regular council meeting minutes for March 21st and the Committee of the Whole March 28th minutes. Council, any discussion about that? Before we vote, I'll just check. Uh, Councillor Ostashik, are you still logging? Yeah, no? Okay. We'll go traditionally on this one as well, please, Council. All those in favor, please indicate. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you. And that will bring us to Citizens Minute with Council. Uh, if there's anybody with us today that would like to uh, have a minute with Council, this is certainly your time. We'd simply ask that you step forward, uh, that you state your name, and that it isn't a chance for a back and forth with Council. Simply, it's just a, a minute with Council to hear out any concerns or thoughts that you have. Do we have anybody digitally today for a minute with Council? Huh? Uh, anybody in chambers for a minute with Council? Okay, well, seeing none, then we will move on to our delegations and presentations. And that brings us to the Hinton Youth Advisory Council. And uh, would, we'd ask you to come on up. Hey, counselors. James Everett here. Um... Yeah, I'm one of the administrators that help out with the Youth Advisory Council, and this is Sterling, and this is Jada, and they're going to be presenting to you guys all about our Youth Advisory Council and what we've been up to this semester and what we plan to do by the end of our term by this summer, hopefully. If you just want. Hello, um, our current members for this term are Cadence, who's on our fourth term, myself, Jada, Hayden, Sterling, Leah, and her brother Brett back there. Oh, we also, uh, we also have our own land acknowledgement. The Hinton Youth Advisory Council is grateful to the stewards that take care of our beautiful and vibrant mountain ranges. HYAC recognizes the role to make Hinton better for all our community. In the spirit of togetherness, the youth counselors uphold a neighborly spirit as settlers in service of Treaty 6 and the Métis Nation Region 4 lands. 
So the project that we've de decided to do this year, last year we did the garden project, but this year we've decided to host a art night in collaboration with the Hinton Youth Center. And like, so we're hosting a art project to like teach children, like of all ages, a specific art project, which we haven't yet decided on, but it'll be in collaboration with various artists. And yeah, we're hoping to educate some people on some art. Uh, we've also done a lot of volunteer work. Uh, some of the places we volunteered are the Snowflake Dance, uh, the Family Hawaiian Dance, and the Food Bank. And some of our administration, Councillor Joanna Reyes, Councillor Hawes, Amanda Worski, I don't know if she's here, but James Everett, as you saw, Margaret Schultz, and Tori Gunya. And these are our online channels. We have a Facebook, Instagram, and a website. Great. Uh, so thanks so much for coming and presenting to us tonight. Uh, if you're okay with it, I'd like to turn it over to council and see if they have any questions or uh, any comments for you. Councillors, I have Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, no questions. Thanks, guys, for coming. Um, so just a couple of things to add uh, that we've done different this year than we did last year. Um, and you're going to be seeing, you already saw uh, on the agenda tonight, the silhouettes, but uh, we uh, are starting to involve our youth council and some of the matters of our town, getting their perspective on it. So we started off with the silhouettes. I believe next to come to us is the pool project. Um, so uh, specifically the slides, what options do we have for slides and what are our youth counselors feel about that? So that's been really exciting um, to, to have those conversations amongst the group. Um, also, we've been trying uh, to get ideas to, um, I guess, bring more knowledge to our, our youth in regards to what's out there in our communities. Uh, for volunteer, we had presentations from the food bank, we had presentation from, uh, um, uh, there was the uh, forest uh, rangers unfortunately or the junior forest program uh, unfortunately we weren't able to uh, hear from him soon enough but uh, hopefully maybe next year because uh, the deadline was missed but these these this group has been very active in those conversations and I have to also say we also uh, have been um, we've been promoting debate uh, and our administration, uh, Margaret, uh, I'm going to say brings some very exciting topics to our meetings for our, our youth to debate uh, from do superheroes, uh, do they uh, have to fix the community and saving our community, uh, all the damage that they do, should it be on the taxpayers or where it goes from, I think one I missed was on ketchup, uh, that was another one on fries, stuff like that, but they've been a really good group in their, in their debating this year, so. I just wanted to mention that. So good job, guys. So thank you. Council, any other comments or questions for our awesome crew? Seeing none then, I just want to say thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for being part of the Youth Council. It's important uh, that you're stepping up and participating in what you're beginning to see, some pretty weighty topics. So I was excited to see the metal silhouettes coming before us tonight. So Thank you. And uh, if you need anything or you ever want to bend our ear, feel free to get a hold of any of us. Uh, we're more than happy to help out. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And I just clicked out of it. <laughs> And, and with that, we will move into our action items, starting with 6.1, the Metal Silhouettes Design Public Consultation. Just wait a moment for, there we go. Uh, and I will turn that over to CAO Panasiak. Thank you, Chair. And I will turn this one over to Heather Mark and Dawn Engredal. Uh, if you guys would like to, or if you want to present back there. Here's sufficient. Thank you. 
Through the chair and to the members of council, thank you for the opportunity. Following up on the HYAC delegation, administration is before you this afternoon, seeking endorsement of the themes identified by HYAC regarding scope of artistic direction for the capital project known as Silhouettes. Following endorsement, the intention of administration is incorporation of such themes into the request for proposal slated for release on the 20th of this month. Myself, as well as Mr. Engerdahl, events coordinator and project manager, are present for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, it's over to us. Questions or motions? Councillor Ostashek. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. I do have a question. I'm, I'm a little unclear on what happens moving forward. Or is the suggestion that we simply select some themes or is administration looking for particular icons? And, and I guess what's the process moving forward as this goes out for tender? Administration? Um, through the chair to Councillor Stashik. So really what we're looking for now is just to identify some of the themes and the, the general concepts to put those into our request for proposals. So the uh, the proponents know what they're going to be looking for. Um, and as they're the metal artists, they'll be able to, I guess, advise further is my understanding on uh, what they're able to provide us. But we do wanna have some input from council on generally what do we want these to look like and what kind of themes are we looking for in these, uh, in these metal silhouettes. I'm good for now. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, uh, Councillor Labarge. That, that was kind of my question. Okay. Council? Councillor Haas. Uh, I think just a clarification uh, to administration, if I recall, because uh, again, these all these ideas came from the youth council, uh, but I believe under active living or lifestyle, um, and if I recall, we did have the conversation about cross country skiing or downhill, and we we wanted to uh, do the the cross country, not downhill, because it represents another community that has that. Uh, just to clarify, uh, so that when uh, you know if this is something that moves forward, uh, that was the intent of that active lifestyle. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, I have myself in queue next. I guess. Um, I was a little unsure uh, coming in this evening about whether or not we'd be narrowing things down or selecting a certain group. Um, is there a particular deadline or any timing considerations that council needs to be aware of uh, if we're going out uh, requesting uh, essentially the tender process to take place? I'm just wondering if maybe it might benefit council to have a little bit more of a free and open conversation at a committee of the whole meeting. Again, if that's the will of council, I'm just curious what our, our timelines are looking like. Uh, through the chair, I will pass this on to Heather Mark. Uh, we had anticipated the day to be April 20th, but I don't know if there's a specific reason or if there's uh, some flexibility in those dates. Thank you for the question through the chair and to the chair. Uh, April 20th provides a timeline for administration to install these around the same time that our parks crew would be removing the banners already in place, which mitigates additional costs for rentals of lift equipment or labor. Uh, therefore, with the artist timelines that we anticipate for production of the metal silhouettes to give approximately three months for delivery on August 15th, the timelines for the tender process were otherwise preparation and delivery on the 20th for award around the 1st of May to potentially the 7th, based off of proposals received, and then sufficient time for the artists themselves to deliver on eight designs for 30 silhouettes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, uh, anyone else? Councillor Haas. Yeah, and I realized that the rest of council was not part of the discussion. So I guess, you know, like I said, the administration came to the youth council with these different 
titles of areas that we'd like to to focus on active lifestyle indigenous industry um and again a lot of great uh, conversation uh, come into this all of these things as what the youth council um uh, had uh, identified as what represents our community well um you know uh, so i guess based on that I, not knowing to the inc- intricacies of the because I see here we need 25 silhouettes. Is administrations, uh, how many silhouettes? I mean, we have 25 in total, but I guess the question is, and I, I believe that there's 22 different silhouettes that are listed here. How many of these 22 do you want us to uh, to narrow down to? Uh, do you? Because it, it, I'm i assuming that some are more intricate, more, more costly than say others. So I guess, how many do we want out of the 22? Thank you for the question through the chair to Councillor Haas. The objective of identifying 22 different themes, more or less with the behest of council, is to provide parameters for artistic license. Of the approximate 25 to 30 silhouettes, we're looking for eight designs that would be replicated. Uh, Mr. Engerdahl, anything to add? Nope, that covers it. Councillor Haas. So, Mr. Chair, would it be something to look for consensus like we've done in the past where we see consensus for certain ones uh, to narrow it down to the eight or nine? Is that some a process that uh, would be helpful for here? Uh, we could. I just I'd like to check with administration uh, against the recommended action before we proceed. Mm-hmm. Uh, the recommended action, admin, is that council endorse the selection of icon designs for the Metal Silhouettes Capital Project identified by the youth advisory council as presented in this report uh is is the recommended action just that simple that we are looking for something as high level as that and then allowing administration to go to work with the particular vendor about which specific icon designs will make it uh through to the end through the chair thank you for the question indeed that is the impetus of the recommended action The idea being we want to provide limitations for artists, but not within a scope that would exert too much influence over what we received for proposals. Thank you. Councillor Councillor Labarge. Nope. Okay, Council, so the recommended action does stand. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um... We have a whole bunch of information right now that we can take to our community. We can say we've got 25 things to pick from, and out of that 25, we're going to pick eight. So get this information to our citizens. So I would prefer to make this motion that council refers the matter of selection of themes and icon designs for the Metal Silhouettes Capital Project to a future committee of the whole meeting for further discussion. I I think coming into this meeting, I didn't have all the information that I needed to make a decision tonight on eight silhouettes. So I would prefer this to come to a standing. Thank you, sir. While we're attempting to capture that, I'm just going to go to CAO Panasiak. Uh, Thank you uh, to the chair through the rest of council. So today we're not looking for eight specific items. I think the idea here is that we wanted to cast a wide net of themes that we thought uh, captured the um, captured Hinton. But when we actually go for RFP, we want to, I believe the intent is that we are going to keep it as broad as it is stated today in the report and that uh, the individual artists would come up with the designs um, based on a list to choose from and that could be due to a number of different factors that we're not very well versed on like you know is it going to look too uh, busy um you know uh, the the thickness of the metal and the, the design and so there's a lot of different aspects that we don't know about and that's the in, the intent behind going to a proposal system so really we just wanted to put some general goal posts around it and let the artists kind of um, through their proposal system provide what they could uh, provide designs. But I don't believe the intent was to narrow down that list to eight specific items at this time. Thank you, CAO Panasiak for that, uh, that clarification. While we're uh, waiting to 
capture that motion, I'll go to, oh, we are on to discussion, but I do want to clarify first. Councillor Race, uh, the council refers the matter of selection of themes and icon designs for the Metal Silhouettes Capital Project to a future committee of the whole meeting for further discussion. Does that capture your intent? Option three of our um, given options. Thank you. I will go to you, Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> um, at this time, unfortunately, I can't support the uh, motion that's put forward for a couple of reasons. Uh, there's some timelines that were indicated by administration that we kind of need to get after if we're going to be able to uh, achieve it in conjunction with the fabric banners being taken down, which is something I would like to see. The other thing I'd like to see is I would like to see some artistic license being allowed to the uh, bidders on this project to see what they come back with, with some parameters, I think, that that could be set by council that, that could likely be done today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Councillor Race. Oh, sorry. I'm... Okay. Uh, I just want to double check. Uh, Councillor Ostashik, are you successfully signed in now? Is it working? Okay, perfect. So, Council, any further discussion on the motion on the floor? Seeing none, if we could have that sent for votes, please. And we will just wait a second for it to pop up. Council, we will call that to question that council refers the matter of selection of themes and icon designs for the Middle Silhouettes Capital Project to a future committee of the whole meeting for further discussion. If you could vote now, please. Uh, and that is defeated uh, one to four with Councillor Race voting for and the remainder of council voting against. And I have Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> I would like to make a motion if I may. Please. Uh, it's the recommended action with a modification. So I'd like to move that council endorse the selection of icon designs for the metal silhouettes capital project identified by the Hinton Youth Advisory Council. This is the modification with at least one icon representing each of the recommended themes as presented in this report. If I could speak to it, please. Uh, I think it's important that each of those themes that were selected by the Hinton Youth Advisory Council are represented. Uh, I want to be able to make sure that the themes are represented without being too prescriptive about what the actual icons would be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, and I will I will be speaking in favor of the uh, the motion on the floor. And I appreciate the uh, the modification. Council, uh, any further discussion on the matter? Seeing none. Uh, if we could just see the, the direction and send it out for voting. Oh, Councillor Haas. Okay. Council endorses the selection of at least one item selected from. Councillor Ostashik, if you want to clarify, I will put you on there. There we go. Uh, with at least one icon representing each of the recommended themes as presented in this report. Councillor Ostashik, does that? Does. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Council, any further discussion on that before we send it out to vote? Seeing none, administration, if we could put that out to vote, please. OK, 
Council. Uh, we'll call the question that Council endorses the selection of icon designs for the Metal Silhouettes Capital Project, identified by the Hinton Youth Advisory Council, with at least one icon representing each of the recommended themes as presented in this report. Uh, please vote now. And that is carried unanimously. And I do see that Councillor, or pardon me, Mayor Michaels has joined the vote. So I imagine he just entered. Oh, no, because I'm just voting through here. That's weird. And now it's disappeared. Weird. Okay. We will uh, we'll move to see uh, council. Any further discussion on that items? Seeing none, then we will move on to item six point two, the cemetery bylaws seven nine six dash five schedule A, presented by our CAO. Uh, thank you, Chair. To through to the rest of council. Uh, I will pass this one over to Gary, but before I do, I just wanted to clarify one point on this item. Uh, you, there, there's a recognition from administration that this is a very old antiquated bylaw, and we do intend on bringing this forward um, in the near future. Um, however, we, with the col new columbarium coming in, we do have a backlog of orders, and we want to make sure that before we start to sell placements on that columbarium, that we have a fee schedule that will be consistent um, uh, from now until and even when the new bylaws pass. But we want to ensure that we, we're representing uh, council's desire for cost recovery on these items, and so bringing forward amendment sooner rather than later. With that, I will pass that on to uh, uh, to Gary. Good evening, Council. Uh, before you is report for bylaw 796-5, Cemetery Fee Schedule A. Administration it looks at all costs associated with burials and columbarium placements and are proposing the adjustments to attain cost recovery for these services. These costs are included uh, the cost included increased costs for new columbarium as well as uh, accurate costing for services for winter burial. Um, in the meeting, the committee of the whole meeting of March 28th, it was requested that uh, we bring this back to regular council. And there was also a request for a little bit more um, detail in the costs associated with the columbariums. Um, we have brought forward a full cost recovery for the niche and the concrete pad based on the cost at, uh, of putting those in, as well as costs for plaque and staffing. And those are at an approximate um, cost recovery amount. It's a little different for each, each person, depending on how they do their plaque and date stamps, as well as how much time some people spend a bit more time with administration uh, discussing their their um, the burial and the, the process of the cemetery. And some people are very quick and, and don't spend as much time. So the uh, average cost for those uh, for the plaque and the staffing cost is about eight hundred and sixty dollars uh, with five hundred of that going towards the plaque and about three hundred and sixty for staffing costs. Administration uh, recommends that council give uh, first, second, and third reading for the bylaw update. And any questions? Thank you very much. Council, it is over to you. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd be prepared to make a motion, but I want to get council's thoughts on and maybe administration as well. Um, I had a question from a citizen. Uh, wondering between the burial casket, the winter months and summer months, instead of charging an extra $400 in the winter months um, is to split the costs uh, from 800 to 800, um, just to even things out. Um, I mean, let's face it, we can't choose when a person passes um, and, and to uh, have an extra cost in the winter months. So just to even out, so it's, it's still cost, uh, 
uh, effective, but uh, it, it evens out amongst. I'm just curious on maybe what the rest of council may think of that. Um, I'm prepared to make that motion, but uh, and any thoughts from administration as to, you know, the current way it's presented and would that would that suffice for administration as well? Or is there anything that uh, would prohibit that? Start there. Uh, CAO Panacea. Through the chair to the rest of council, there's nothing preventing us from doing uh, averaging out the cost for summer and winter burials to provide a, some consistency in the cost. It, it certainly can be done. Uh, we, we provided the summer and winter uh, month analysis simply for no other reason other than that's what historic practice has been. Um, so, you know, we're certainly open to new or better ways of, of charging for these. Councillor Haas. Yeah, oh, I'd like to make a motion then. You ready? Okay. Um, I'd like to move that we uh, um, split the winter and summer fees for burial casket to eight hundred dollars for each. Yeah, I'll do it. I'd like to move that we change the burial casket fees to 800 winter, 800 summer. So 800 winter, 800 summer, just to be clear on what. Thank you. If I can just quickly speak to it, I, Please. you know, it's still the cost recovery and it evens things out a bit and it doesn't uh, place more of a burden on, you know, wintertime months for those that uh, need to use those services. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just quickly go over to CAO Panasic. Uh, does that, is administration clear on the, the intent of the motion? We'll feel it's uh, appropriately worded. Uh, through the chair. Yeah, we are clear. Perfect. Uh, council, uh, any further? Oh, I'm just curious if, uh, sorry, uh, through to council, uh, is this also intended for the urn burial uh, winter summer costs as well? And I will, uh, I will go to Councillor Haas. Councillor Haas? I think if we can just deal with this one first and then we can move on to the other because they are two separate lines, but uh, I, I definitely would have appetite for that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ostashek. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Just quickly. Yeah, this is something I support. This isn't a service where a person has a choice on whether when they can take advantage of it when they need it. So I did think it was a little bit odd that, you know, if that's a service that needs to be taken advantage of in the winter time, that, that there is a surcharge. So I appreciate this creative solution to that and uh, an average costing throughout the year is uh, is a good solution. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostasha. Council, any further discussion? Seeing none, then we'll put this to vote, please. We'll just get it up in front of Council.
Council will call to question that council split the fees for burial casket to $800 for the winter and $800 for the summer. If you could please vote now. Councillor Race, are you seeing yours? Councillor Race, are you uh, voting in? We're good. There we go. All right. And that is carried unanimously. Five in favor. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So, along the same lines, I'd like to make a motion regarding the uh, urn burial. I'd like to move that council direct administration. Are we putting it up or are we just, okay. To uh, average the fees for urn burial. at $425 for summer and $425 for winter, or $425 for each of them, sorry. I think my math's correct there. I did it on the fly, so. Hey, we'll just give that a second to be hammered out. Councillor Ostashek, does that meet with your expectations? Uh, if we just put the word and between winter and summer, it would be good. Or sorry, no, actually, we need to take and summer off the end of it. My apologies. Yep. Looks good. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Council, any further discussion on this item? Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For this one, I will not support this. I think they're, we're talking two totally different things, a um, casket burial and an urn burial. An urn, families can um, keep an urn for months, for years. Um, totally different than um, a casket. So I will not support this. Council, any further discussion before we call this to question? Seeing none, uh, administration, if we could uh, get that up in front of council and then we'll call the question. Council, we will call the question that council direct administration to average the fees for urn burial at $425 for summer and $425 for winter. Uh, if you could vote now. Uh, and that, successfully passes four to one with Councillor Race voting against. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, any further questions uh, or any motions for administration? Councillor Ostasher. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move that Council give first reading to bylaw Number 796-5, Cemetery Fees Schedule A as amended. Thank you very much. We'll just have a look at that, and then we'll see if there's any additional discussion. Excellent. Uh, so we have that there. The council give first reading to bylaw number 796-5, Cemetery Fees Schedule A as amended. Council, any discussion on that? Seeing none, then we will uh, go to the vote, please. And we will call it to question. Council, that council give first reading to bylaw 796-5, cemetery fee schedule A, as amended. Please vote now. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. 
Council, uh, Councillor Haas. Uh, yep. There we go. Uh, I'd like to move the council give second reading to bylaw number 796-5 cemetery fees schedule A as amended. Thank you very much. Council, any discussion on that before we move on? Just make sure that that captures it. Second reading. Councillor Wigan. Perfect. Council, any further discussion? Seeing none, we will have it sent to vote, please. And we will call that to question. The council gives second reading to bylaw number 796-5, cemetery fee schedule A, as amended. Please vote now. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, Councillor Labarge. Uh, I would like to move that council unanimously agree to proceed to the third reading of bylaw number 7-9-6-5, Cemetery Fee Schedule A, as amended. Thank you very much. Oh, here. Uh, there you go. Uh, just add as amended at the end, take the word and out of there and delete the last sentence and we're good to go. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. Council, any further discussion on that? Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I cannot support unanimous reading. Um, this is something I want to get to the community. We're talking about a lot of money here for um, burial of a casket and an urn. And I'd like to get some input from the citizens. Thank you, sir. Council, any further discussion? Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll be speaking in favor of this. Um, we're on a time crunch uh i mean with the columbine coming um i mean if we would have waited longer we could have done the whole bylaw but administration is making the recommendation um and it is cost recovery um and i think that's important to this this particular area we haven't been a cost recovery uh, before uh and it's to move and the, the, it is such an old bylaw and with very dated uh, schedule fees as well. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, my fellow councillors uh, agree that uh, this is needs to move forward uh, sooner rather than later. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, any further discussion? I will, uh, I will be speaking in favor of the, uh, the motion on the floor. I think Really, a lot of my questions have been answered in terms of the fees. And I additionally, I appreciate the work uh, put forward by our fellow councillors in terms of equalizing the difference between the seasons. I think that was primarily the, the largest question that I had that was outstanding. Thank you very much. Council, any further discussion before we send it out to vote? Seeing none then, administration, if we could send that out uh, to council for vote, please. And we will call to question that council unanimously agree to proceed to third reading of bylaw number 796-5, cemetery fee schedule A, as amended. Council, please vote now. Uh, and as this is a unanimous consent vote, uh, it was four to one with Councillor Race voting against that is defeated. Administration, uh, just perhaps more so for those people who might be watching or interested, my expectation would be that council can expect to see this at a future regular uh, meeting. Uh, yes, through the chair, I believe our uh, this will be brought forward on the April 18th agenda. Perfect. Thank you very much. Council, anything further with bylaw number 796-5 fee schedule A? Seeing none. Then we will proceed to item 6.3, uh, approval of the Hinton Golfing Society operating budget. 
Uh, and we will turn that over to administration. Thank you, Chair. And I will turn this one over to Ms. Juke. Uh, thank you, CAO Panasic, through the chair to the rest of council. Uh, this report is to present the final board approved Hinton Golfing Society's 2023 operating budget for council approval. Uh, council approval actually is required for their budget uh, by the operations and management agreement that the town has with the society. This was an agreement that we entered into in 2023 for three years. Uh, the 1.5 million budget is attachment one to this report. It's a fairly high level um, summary of the budget. We're going to put it up on the screen if you have questions about it, but because the printing is very small, my apologies for that. Council did receive a civic agency presentation from the general manager of the golf, golf course in the fall of 2022, which included the preliminary budget. This version of course is board approved and the minutes actually of that board approval are attached as attachment two. As noted in the report, Payment of indebtedness is provided for in the budget, which includes payments to the town, uh, payments to the golf cart lease, other financing, and the financed payments on a new skid steer with specialized attachments that the golfing society has identified as necessary for maintenance of ongoing, ongoing maintenance of the service level at the golf course. Uh, so just to uh, elaborate a little bit more, uh, the Golfing Society has identified some overdue life cycle maintenance projects uh, that will, again, maintain the existing level of service at the course at a lower cost than relying on Edmonton-based contractors to come out periodically. Uh, and of course, it won't be just in one year that the skid steer will function this way. It'll be multiple years. So with that, I'll take any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, Council. Any questions or motions? Councillor Labarge. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to move that council approves the Hinton Golfing Society's 2023 budget as presented. Um, and if I might, um, I'm really happy to see the skid steer addition in there. Um, as I've been led to believe now, the number one risk to the golf course is the incursion of the roots into the greens. Uh, and if we can deal with that locally, I think that that's going to end up at the end of the day, saving a bunch of money. So I'm glad that that's actually going to happen. And I'm really happy they made 95 grand that last year. Thank you very much, Council Labarge. Council, any additional comments? Otherwise, we do have a motion on the floor. <coughs> Seeing none, then I will ask administration if you could please send that out to vote so that we can call it to question. Perfect. Council, we will call this to question. The council approves of the Hinton Golfing Society's 2023 budget as presented. Please vote now. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, uh, any further discussion on that item? Very well, seeing none, we will move on to uh, item 6.4, budget for the finishing mower deck capital funding. Administration? Uh, thank you, Chair. As I believe Ms. Way is sick today, I will hand this off to Ms. Juke. Thank you, CAO. Thank you, CAO Panasic, and through to, through the chair to the rest of council. I'll just point out that Supervisor Arena and Park Supervisor Chad O'Shanick is with us tonight as well. He is the project manager on this and is able to answer any detailed questions that you might have. Uh, this report is to request additional capital budget of five thousand four hundred and ten dollars for the finishing more capital project. Attachment one is a copy of the capital project profile on this item that council did approve funding for uh, on December 6, twenty twenty two. Results from the competitive request for quotation process this spring, which are summarized in the report, find the lowest bid at 31,410. Um, and I'll just point out that quotes are good for 30 days from March 30th, which is when we close the uh, RFQ process. The required additional budget is available from the Parks and Trails Major Reserve, which has a current balance of just over $640,000. And this added allocation will allow the capital project to complete immediately and the finishing mower to be put to use ASAP in uh, 2023. 
Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Haas. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that Council approve an additional $5,410 to the 2023 capital budget for the finishing more deck project with the funds to come from the Parks and Trails Major Reserve. I can speak to it real Please. quickly. I mean, this was, we discussed it during the budget pro process. Um, unfortunately, costs go up, uh, you know, unexpectedly, but this seems to be a minimal amount to get this project going. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, any further discussion on that before we send it out to vote? Seeing none, administration, if we could send that out to Council to vote so we can call the question. Council will call the question. The council approve an additional $5,410 to the 2023 capital budget for the finishing mower deck project with funds coming from the Parks and Trails Major Reserve. Please vote now. Uh, and that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, any further discussion on that action item? Seeing none, then we will move on to item 6.5 the Hinton District Chamber of Commerce Signature Sponsorship Request. And I will turn it over to administration. Thank you, Chair, to the rest of Council. So with our new uh, one-off financial request policy, we do have a, a few of the, these requests in the hopper. Um, I'll just point out one thing before I hand it off to Ms. Juke, who's handling this file. Um, we do have $20,000 currently available in the council contingency, um, but I, uh, I just will point out to council that we have made a multi-year commitment to the Timberwolves. Um, my math indicates that that commitment uh, that will likely come later on this year will be approximately $5,000. So although $20,000 is sitting there, I would, um, for the purposes of looking at other requests, I would consider um, that our starting point be 15. With that, I will pass off to Ms. Juke. Uh, thank you, and through the chair to the rest of council, the following two reports uh, bring one-off financial requests to council con for consideration. Both of these sponsorship requests were accepted by administration prior to approval of the one-off financial request policy last council meeting. The first request, as mentioned, is to for, from the Hinton and District Chamber of Commerce for the town to sponsor their signature events in 2023. In the past, the town has typically sponsored the chamber events at platinum level. The $1,800 cost represents 9% of the original council contingency budget, uh, which is which is an aspect of the policy. I'll just remind council that is has been uh, has been um, accepted in policy. Attachment one outlines the proposal, the events, and the fulfillment offered for each level of sponsorship, which includes at the platinum, platinum level, level, acknowledgement of the support in announcements at the events, two tickets to each event, and publication of the town logo on promotional materials for the events. There are options for alternative sponsorship levels, of course, ranging in cost between 2.5% of the council contingency budget as it is today, and 7.5% of that budget. And with that, I'll take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, Council, it's over to you. Any questions or motions? Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. CAO, could you repeat what you had said? I, I know about the Timberwolves. It's that last part I missed. Uh, thank you to the chair, to Councillor Race. So we had budget $20,000 for the council contingency, um, but I, I believe in the, it was 2021, we made a multi-year commitment to, um, to offset some of the ice rental rates for the Timberwolves. Last year, it was 50%, um, and that was just shy of 10,000. This year's at 25%. So um, my assumption is that the ice times will be relatively consistent and we'd be looking at contributing approximately $5,000 through this fund to the Timberwolves uh, in the winter of this year. Thank you. Uh, Ch Mr. Chair, if I could. Please. Um, oh, sorry, I, I lost it. I'll, uh, I'll come back to you. Sounds good. Uh, Council, uh, the floor is open. Any further questions and or motions? Councillor Labarge. 
Um, I would like to move that council approves a platinum level sponsorship for the Hinton District Chamber of Commerce 2023 signature events at the $1,800 with funds coming from the 2023 Council Contingency Fund. And if I could just make comment to that, um, uh, in my business, I got exactly the same proposal. This isn't a, um, the chamber coming and asking for a donation to the chamber. Um, this is a request that they put out to all of their members. And um, the town's a significant member. Um, and, you know, we want to send people to the to the gala. I think we want to be represented at these things. Um, and I do think that this is a is a is a um, uh, a good um, use of some sponsorship dollars. Um, I would this and the next one we're going to look at, though, I would like to maybe uh, look at a way to move away from this coming um, as a one time uh, request and, and pretend, potentially have a look at both Wild Mountain and this one as uh, at, at budget time. I'm not sure the best way to do that, but um, this is probably a pretty inefficient way to do it. But as it sits right now, that would be my proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Labarge. I have myself in queue next. Uh, I'm happy to support this. I think when you look at this, uh, the events, the signature events, Beer and Blue Jeans, the Small Business Awards Gala, uh, the Chamber General Meetings, Golf Tourney, Canada Day, Snowflake Parade, the General Meetings and Networks, uh, these are events that contribute greatly to our community. If you divvy up that 1800 bucks across all of those events, there's, there's a lot of value to be found. So I'm looking forward to supporting this. Thank you. Uh, Council, any other discussion or questions prior to calling this to vote. Seeing none, then administration, if we can please have this sent to council uh, so that they could vote on this. And we will call the question, the council approve a platinum level sponsorship of the Hinton and District Chamber of Commerce 2023 signature events at $1,800 with funds coming from the 2023 council contingency fund. Council, if you could vote now. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, anything further on this action item before we move on? Seeing none, we will move on to the Wild Mountain Music Festival sponsorship request. Administration, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I will turn this over to Ms. Juke for any comments. I thank you through the Chair to the rest of Council. This second sponsorship request again, was lodged some time ago with administration. It's related to Hinton's annual Wild Mountain Music Festival. The town has sponsored this July multi-day event several times, usually with a combination of $3,000 in cash and in-kind contribution of free use of the showmobile, valued at $1,650. Combined, this brings the value of the town's sponsorship to the platinum level. Mm -hmm. Attachment one and the report outline the event and its economic community social and tourism industry benefits to the community. I'd like to point out that the um, sponsorship package that was sent to us uh, asserts that there's a festival attendance of about 4,500 4, people. And also that average festival attendees in Alberta spend between 500 and $1,000 each. Uh, in my calculation, that puts the economic benefit uh, better, greater than the proposal indicates at two between two and a quarter million dollars and $5 million to our region, to our community. So the attached proposal outlines the fulfillment offered for each level of sponsorship, which at the proposed value includes acknowledgement of the support and announcements at the event, two tickets to the weekend, and publication of the town logo on promotional materials. There are options for alternative sponsorship levels, of course, ranging between 9.75% and 18.25%, of the contingency budget as it is today. And with that, I'll take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Uh, Council, it's over to you. Any questions or motions? Councilor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I do, I do have a question. In the past, when Wild Mountain Music Festival has come to Council requesting um, sponsorship funding, it was to help fund the Autumn Festival. 
I'm just wondering, is that the intent this time around too? Is this for the Autumn Festival specifically, or is this for the Wild Mountain Music Festival proper itself? Administration? Um, Ms. Duke, if you don't have any comments, but I believe the two uh, festivals are separate. Um, and the one that's being proposed today is specifically for the, um, the Wild Mountain Music Festival. So I would have a follow up then. Please. I'm not sure what the intent of the moving forward with the uh, Autumn Festival is. I realize they're separate, but it's they're put on by the same by the same group by I don't know what the the nonprofit name is, but uh, the Autumn Festival and the uh, Wild Mountain Music Festival are put on by that same group. So is there an intent that the Autumn Festival is going to continue then if this is going to the music festival? the summer festival. Uh, I did get some good positive feedback about the autumn festival and I would like to see that continue. So it, it has some bearing on whether I support this or not, actually. Thank you. Administration. Thank you. I can answer that one uh, through the chair to the rest of council. The autumn festival is not necessarily uh, guaranteed to happen this year. So we did propose an operating budget uh, operating budget case for funding for the Autumn Festival of Memory Serves. And I think that um, events coordinator uh, Ingerdahl can speak to this. This is a separate, it's the same individuals that organize the second festival, but it's not necessarily um, a guaranteed go this year. And uh, Mr. Ingerdahl, could you add to that? Thanks, uh, Ms. Chuk. Um, in the past, it was a collaboration between Wild Mountain Music Festival, the Foothills Road Riders uh, did the Santa run um, at the same time. The town of Hinton was a partner in that, and the Rotary uh, Club of Hinton. Uh, Last year, it was brought forward to us uh, that we needed to investigate and determine whether or not who was going to lead the charge on the Autumn Festival. Um, Wild Mountain Music Festival, specifically Rob Daru, uh, has been coordinating that effort over the last uh, three events, I believe, two sorry thanks rob and uh so it, it is on up in the air at the moment as to whether or not it's going to occur for the 2023 season thank you mr deputy mayor thank you very much councillor and councillor race thank you mr chair just a question to administration your top line under recommended action it says um plus free use of the snowmobile, no, showmobile. And then down lower, it says the $1,650 is a waived rental fee. That $1,600 will come out of, or will it come out of our contingency budget? Through the chair, you are correct. Councillor Race, it will come out of the, uh, uh, of the council contingency budget for a total of 4650 Okay. Thank you. Council, we do not have a motion on the floor at this present time. Do you have any questions? Councillor Ostashek. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move that council accept the Wild Mountain Music Festival sponsorship request as information. If I could speak to it, please. I spoke earlier about the Autumn Festival and how I received some good feedback, and I probably would have supported this if it would have been dedicated to the Autumn Festival. Seeing how as how it's going to the music festival itself. And the request is fairly substantial. I mean, it, it represents nearly a quarter of the budget that's available to us this year, of which quite a bit of it's already spoken for. Uh, I can't support the request that's come forward. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. I have myself in queue. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't support the uh, the motion that's on the floor currently. Um, for myself, I just feel that the uh, this is an opportunity for the town of Hinton to partner up uh, and support the Wild Mountain Music Festival and all that it's brought to the region in terms of the economic benefits. I think more so than the funding, understanding it, it is a chunk, a good chunk of the council contingency fund. I think it's also important for us uh, to have an opportunity to step up as a partner uh, and, and move forward with, you know, the benefits it has for the region. Uh, just for myself, um, Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I feel that if this if this support doesn't come from the town, the Wild Mountain Music Festival is going to go on as planned. I don't think that this relatively small amount in the music festival's total budget is going to affect them significantly enough that it would affect whether it can go ahead or the quality of it. When, when these one-off requests come to us, if we base it solely on the value that it brings to the community, it's going to be really hard to say no to anything. Everything brings value to the community. All these projects, all these uh, activities, they all bring value. They all bring visitors. So at some point, though, there needs to be a decision about where the money can be best spent. And in my opinion, I feel the Wild Mountain Music Festival will go ahead and can go ahead without impact if they don't get this money. And I think it's better, in my opinion, to save it for an initiative that may not be able to go ahead if they can't get funding for it. That's my reasoning. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sasha. Council. Oh, Councillor Haas. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Question to administration. Um, with the, the motion that's on the table right now, um, if a councillor had an appetite to say, want to fund the showmobile for three days for, and, and not the other $3,000, does that, that this motion negate that possibility? Administration? Uh, through the chair to members of council. Um, yes, I believe. I, I believe that the motion as put forward is saying that uh, the report as put forward is being received for information. Um, my recommendation uh, on this one is that if council did want to support it in another dollar amount, that uh, you, you would you would um, be required to defeat that motion, put forward another motion with a, an alternative funding amount. Okay, thank you. If I may, Please. yeah. I mean, this is the 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 the, the issue with this this contingency, right? Um, you know, and we knew too back in 2021. You know, using those funds for oh, in the next few years for another organization handcuffed us with these funds. Uh, but we are where we at are at right now. So. I'm not going to support it because I'd like to potentially look at a, an alternative for funding uh, that maybe still help out the Mountain Music Festival, but maybe not at the full request that it's at. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So before I made this motion, I did wait quite a while and nobody else was putting any motion forward. Now that there seems to be some appetite to take a look at some alternatives, I am happy to withdraw this motion. So I'd like to move to withdraw my motion. Good. Council, we are in administration. If you can just advise the chair, uh, we are looking for unanimous consent to remove the motion from the floor, correct? Procedurally? Um, through the chair, I will just have to double check if it is unanimous or simply through vote, but I believe that once the motion's put forward, it's the possession of council and uh, through a simple vote, we can uh, withdraw. Council, I think this is an opportune time. We'll take a, uh, a six minute break uh, just to give administration a chance to confirm whether it's unanimous or simple majority. Uh, and we will reconvene patients' purposes. Uh, CAO, could you let us know uh, for those people who maybe didn't didn't hear? 
Yes, through the chair to the rest of council, it is a simple majority to vote to withdraw that uh, the motion on the floor. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, Councillor Ostashik for reminding me that this is a non-debatable motion. So we will be uh, calling this to question immediately. Uh, so if administration could send that to vote, please, the motion to withdraw. Oh, administration, we're getting the wrong one. Council will just give admin a second to uh, withdraw that from us and get the other motion in front. Admin, if it helps, we can simply do this one the old fashioned way. Yep, perfect. Okay, so council, we are calling to question the uh, the motion to withdraw. Council, all those in favor, please indicate. And that is carried unanimously. That motion passes, which makes our uh, pre-existing motion come off of the floor. And Councillor Labarge. Um, I guess I have a question to administration and and for me supporting the wild mountain music festival just seems natural i sort of invested nine years of my life into the thing and um the the request isn't huge the problem is this the limitations on the contingency fund so if we if we started with 20 we take off the five for the timber wolves the 1800 we just came to the chamber this ends up being like 37 percent of the money we have there uh is there nowhere else that this contribution to something that I think, uh, economically speaking, I don't know, somewhere between a million, $2 million coming into the community. Um, is there nowhere else that this could come from as opposed to this really limited pool of money? CAO? Uh, through the chair to the rest of council. So uh, I'll start off with saying historically, we've kind of moved this particular one around for whatever reason, I believe last year was out of economic development budget. It's never really been in one, um, one place. I, I do agree with the comments made that on these long outstanding um, type of events that we consistently do, they should be budgeted uh, and discussed at budget time to kind of avoid these coming forward. I do believe that this this request would fit under the one-time financial uh, community grants. Um, and so if council would like to table this, uh, there is a possibility that administration could tackle this from another angle, uh, but we would need some time to, to look into it to ensure that this is eligible for another stream of our funding. Councilor Labarge, would you care to continue with that? Well, then I would like to make a motion. And I, is the motion then to bring this forward to a, a committee of the whole meeting? Would that be your intent, CEO Panasic? Um, through the chair, I'm, I'm not overly familiar with the process of the community grants and where those go. Uh, so so I'm, I'm hesitant to comment, but I believe Ms. Wade has a, a better handle on that process. Through the chair uh, to Councilor Labarge, um, the application deadline is April twenty first. So we, I can arrange to discuss and see if the Wild Mountain Music Festival is a, an applicable organization that is eligible for the community grant. Um, and if so, then we can work towards an application. Um, and if it is not, then it, it, we could bring that back to council with that information uh, and reasoning why they're an, an, an ineligible um, organization for the, uh, and we can refer, we can have that council refer the matter uh, of the sponsorship and in-kind contribution uh, to the Wild Mountain Music Festival. Uh, be brought back to Committee of the Whole for further discussion. 
Okay, with that said, then I would like to make that motion, please. We'll give administration a moment to get that up. Uh, Council, in the meantime, if there's any discussion on that while we're confirming, oh, it looks like it's there. Through the through the chair to Councillor Barge, if I may, uh, just to suggest possibly some alternative wording, because um, I, I think bringing it back to council likely would be more appropriate just because we'd be bringing it back to three meetings by that point for a, a relatively small dollar amount. But um, would a, a motion uh, that that says to refer the request for the Wild Mountain Music Festival to the community grant program, if ineligible to return to a regular meeting of council? Would that suffice? Uh, from my perspective, yes. From my perspective, yes. Thank you, Councillor Labarge. So we'll give administration a chance to wordsmith. Uh, and while they're wordsmithing, we can always confirm that uh, in a moment or two, Council, if there's any discussion on that. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't know who to direct this to, but <clears throat> they're asking for $3,000 plus the showmobile for three days which equals $1,600. If it goes to the community grant process, then I think we're just, are we dealing with the full 46 or the just the three? Well, uh, Councillor Race, I'll just give administration a chance to finish writing out the motion and then we'll get your, uh, your question answered. So, Councillor Race, if you'd like to just confirm with administration your question. I think I, I got my answer, but the um, um, Wild Mountain asking for $4,600 from the community grant. Uh, through the chair to the rest of council. Uh, yes, that, that would be the request. It would be for support of all the needs of the Wild Mountain Music Festival for the initiative. So it would include the in-kind value. Okay, so just one more question, if I may, sir. Please. So with the community grant, is it is the maximum $5,000 per request or is it at 10? <laughs> Through the chair to uh, Councillor Race, uh, the maximum is uh, $10,000. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor Race. Council. Uh, we'll just confirm uh, with you, Councillor Lavarge, that the direction on the floor, pardon me, the motion on the floor that Council refer the Wild Mountain Music Festival request to the community grant program and return to a regular Council meeting uh, if ineligible. Perfect. Council, any discussion on that? Seeing none then, uh, administration, if you could put that out to vote, please. And then we will call it to question. Council will call to question that council refer the Wild Mountain Music Festival request to the community grant program and return to a regular council meeting if ineligible. Council, all those in favor, if you could please vote for or against. Uh, and that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, uh, any further discussion on that? Seeing none, then we will move on to item 
the Foothills Recreation Management Association Agreement. And we'll turn that over to administration. Thank you, Chair. And that uh, this one will be taken by Ms. Juke as well. Thank you through the chair to the rest of council. Uh, the services agreement before you tonight is for the Foothills Recreation Management Association, civic agency with the town of Hinton. The town of Hinton, in fact, has been a member of the Foothills Recreation Management Association for the past 12 years and has allocated $20,000 annually to support the maintenance of public recreation areas around our region. Other key members and contributors are Wes Fraser, the biggest supporter of with funding and resources of the team, as well as the town of Edson and Yellowhead County with contributions on a par with Hinton's to this association. In February, council received the civic agency presentation from the FRMA detailing the services performed by the association in 2022 and its plans for 2023. So the attached services agreement, again, based on the templated agreement for civic partnerships um, established in March of this year, details the FRMA services in Schedule A. So essentially, it's a list of 30 campgrounds, public recreation areas, and trails in Hinton's vicinity that they operate and maintain and improve. As is the case with a prior agreement presented to council, the details of the insurance coverage that FRMA holds has yet to be entered into Section 11.3. My apologies. Administration, however, recommends council approve the agreement as presented. Thank you, Administration Council. Uh, any questions or motions? Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that Council approves the 2023 to 2025 service agreement with the Foothills Recreation Management Association as presented. I can speak to it. Please. I mean, this is an ongoing um, agreement that we have had unofficially. This now makes it more official. Uh, it also gives some consistency in regards to funding for this group for a couple of years anyway. Um, you know, we can reevaluate it at that time. Uh, I, I also appreciate administration going through these as well as uh, during budget discussions, it will also uh, free up some time for more discussion on budget. So we're not hearing from each one of these organizations uh, in the future as well, because we have these agreements in place. So. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Haas. Council, any further discussion on that uh, before we look to vote? Councillor Race. Thank you, sir. I just have to say that I will support this. I think it's really important that we stay in this relationship with the group of people or, um, who are in it. We get such a good response from people who uh, go to our campsites. Um, and I really feel it's a reflection of just how wonderful this area of Canada is. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor Race. Council, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, then administration, if you could please put that out to vote. And we will call to question the council approved the 2023 to 2025 services agreement with the Foothills Recreation Management Association as presented. Council, please vote now. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, any further discussion on this item uh, before we move on to our final action item? Seeing none, then we will move on to item 6.8, the Hinton Historical Society Agreement. Uh, administration. Uh, thank you, Chair. I will turn that over to Ms. Juke. Uh, thank you, and through the Chair to the rest of Council. Uh, again, using a templated services agreement, um, we are presenting the um, Civic Partnership Agreement with the Hinton Historical Society for operation of the Northern Rockies Museum, which delivers museum, culture, and heritage services to Hinton and area. Again, attachment one is the templated agreement. And I'll take the opportunity of Ms. Mark being here at Council to thank her for the drafting of this templated agreement. Uh, one of the wonderful things about this is that it allows um, a, a much more ready uh, access to such agreements. 
which can be complex by just presenting a Schedule A of services. And essentially the, the agreement is otherwise templated. So thank you, Ms. Mark, for this. Uh, again, details of the services are outlined in Schedule A. Um, the council received um, a presentation on November, in, sorry, in the fall of 2022. And on November 29th, um, reached consensus to enter into a one-year agreement with an optional one-year renewal. And this agreement does have that term in it. So administration uh, recommends council approve the agreement as presented. And I'll just make one other mention. There are some services that the museum provides to the community that are not outlined in Schedule A. This is the case for some of our civic agencies. Um, the Hinton and District Chamber of Commerce might be one as well. Um, so they're not part of the key performance indicators for this agency. An example would be their community garden, canoe rentals, another one. So again, with that, administration recommends council approve the agreement as presented. Perfect, thank you very, very much. Uh, council, it is over to you. Any questions or motions? Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will move that we, the council approve the 2023 service agreement for the Hinton Historical Society for provisions of services at the Northern Rockies Museum Culture as presented. Do you care to speak to that, Councillor Haas? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, again, it's, I think, you know, it, it serves some clarity in our agreement. Uh, the services that are provided for the money that we do. We we do have a member uh, on uh, the board as well from council uh, to report, which we didn't have before. So, and the option to renew, it'll come back to us again to see if we want to renew it as I heard. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll put myself into queue next. Um, I think this is good. One of the, one of the things I've seen over the years is that um, when when organizations come and we don't have a civic agency agreement in place, it's a little difficult to guess what the appetite of council is to fund during the budget season, uh, the activities of said organization. I think having a, an agreement like this in place, uh, it makes it clear and fair to everybody uh, what the expectations of both partners are and what the expected support can be moving into the budget season. And which I think makes it easier for organizations like the Hinton Historical Society to budget in advance uh, of their operating years. So I think it's just, it benefits everybody all around. Uh, Councillor Labarge. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll support this, uh, but I have a, a question related, unrelated, I guess. Has there been any other uh, or additional discussions with this, the Historical Society regarding the turnover of the property? There was some initial discussions as far as them wanting to get out from under the management of the building. I'm just wondering if any further discussions had occurred. Administration? Uh, thank you through the chair to the rest of council. It was proposed at uh, budget time last year uh, and was accepted as information by council. Uh, it, that, that matter, that, that opportunity can be resurrected at any time. And I believe that the society is still interested in doing that. Uh, for several reasons, funding being one of them, in fact, uh, just surprising, but yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Council, uh, seeing no one on the floor, are there any final questions uh, or discussion prior to going to vote? Seeing none, administration, if we could please then have this sent out to council to vote so we can call to question. And we will call to question that council approve the 2023 services agreement with the Hinton Historical Society for provision of services at the Northern Rockies Museum of Culture and Heritage as presented. Council, if you could vote now, please. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, any further discussion on that item before we move into uh, the rest of our agenda? Seeing none, we will move on. There are no information items listed under uh, item seven. So we will move on to correspondence. Uh, Councillor Haas. Move to accept the council information package for this for April 4th. Thank you very much, Councillor Haas. Council, uh, any discussion on that? 
administration if we could send that out to vote. No, perfect. We'll do it the old fashioned way. We are moving to accept the correspondence item for information. Council, all those in favor, please indicate. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, we will move on to notices of motion. Are there any notices of motion? Seeing none, we will move into reporting uh, and we'll begin with Councillor Reports and I will begin to my left with Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I have nothing to report. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. I will move over to Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a few things to report on. The first thing that I want to send out is congratulations to our Timberwolves. Um, they uh, won uh, the championship this for this year. It was a great game Saturday night playing Vagerville. Um, the uh, arena was packed. Um, you know, it was very, very busy. I believe the 50-50 was over $1,000 uh compared to the night before which was i think about 700 uh so there was a great a representation there both by hinton and by vagerville as well uh so it was a great game one seven to four so congratulations to those guys um i had the privilege uh i only could uh, uh go virtually but i attended the uh spring caucus uh, I know that Mayor Michaels and uh, CEO Panasic uh, were there in person, but uh, I was really impressed by this year's caucus. Uh, I there was a lot of great information. Um, there was a uh, discussion on election strategy. Uh, Think Alberta, uh, vote local was the uh, uh, the title of it, but really talking about uh, going, I recommend that all the councillors go on the uh, AB Muni's website uh, because they've got a lot of different uh, things in regards to launching our their election strategy. Um, you know, the, the campaign will highlight key municipal issues, uh, infrastructure funding, policing, public safety, and so forth, healthcare, emergency medical services. So they had a session on that. Then they had a session on uh, update and Q&A from the Alberta RCMP as well, uh, which again was quite informative. There's a lot of new things coming. Uh, one thing that I noted that I thought was interesting is they're going to potentially start, um, uh, first of all, helping with search and rescue with drones. Uh, so they're starting to try to reduce the cost that way and use a different means to try to uh, uh, you know, assist the search and rescue uh, and potentially in the future for uh, crime prevention as well. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Um, I had a great uh, uh, presentation from fa Family and Community Support Services uh, uh, referred to the power of prevention. Um, and so really highlighted a lot of good work that the FCSS is doing with very minimal amounts of money. Um, they highlighted that there was an increase of $5 million for all of Alberta FCSS, um, but uh, there was some really important information shared there. I do also recommend there's a, an accountability framework, FCSS accountability framework provincially on the website, uh, AB Muni's website. So if you want to take a look at that. Uh, our neighbor, Kevin, uh, Mayor Kevin Zahara, also spoke to the Community Rail Advocacy Alliance. Um, and then we also had a, a presentation by Victim Services and the redesign of it. Um, so a couple of things that are coming from that is, first off, they're, they're, the guy that uh, presented was very apologetic. There's been a lot of misinformation out there about victim services and he took full responsibility for that. But basically the message was that um, things are going to stay the same. Uh, the, the structure will be different, but the services should increase uh, with the new structure program uh, that they're looking at. And April 1st, 2024 is when it's planned to go live. Uh, so there's still work being done there. So. Um, so yeah, so really good information. The second day was the, the uh, premier spoke uh, and the uh, um, opposition leader spoke as well. So that was the, uh, the second day. Um, also at a NASH meeting last night, uh, there's a lot of really good things happening uh, at the PATH. Um, uh, there's a lot of events. Movies are very busy. Um, there's a lot of different events coming. In fact, tomorrow is a uh, Empower Hour. Uh, Mr. Kreiner, uh, Bernie Kreiner, and uh, Natalie Charlton will be at the uh, path tomorrow, and then talking about the uh, what is 
their vision of, of Hinton in 2060. Uh, so anyone interested can go attend that. Um, and Hayek, um, well, after they presented today, we're uh, off at a meeting while we were meeting, uh, starting to plan for our art project. So we're excited to partner up with the Youth Center um, and the uh, the art uh, community in our in our community, uh, art groups in our community to to see what we can offer and what kind of project. The, I'm interested to see what they decided on this evening. So, and that's everything I have to report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Race. Um, nothing to report, sir. Thank you, Councillor Race. Uh, and Councillor Labarge. Soon as I, there we go. Nothing to report, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And we will go over to our Chief Administrative Officer for reporting. Thank you, Chair. Uh, at this time, the only thing that I, I did want to point out is we did receive a uh, our bill for the retroactive RCMP costs for the term of 2017 to 2021. Um, this particular item has been this, the subject of some active advocacy on behalf of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and Alberta Municipalities. Um, at, the, uh, at the Municipal Caucus, they did encourage certain routes to take as a municipality. Uh, there are options available, I do believe. We're still flushing those out, uh, but that will be presented council, to council in the near future. Thank you very much, CAO. Uh, we uh, we will move on. Oh, sorry, Councillor Ostashik. And it didn't take. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I just I have a question for CEO Panasic regarding his his report, if I may. Uh, are you able to share what how much that bill was, and uh, also too, if you have it, what's the impact on that uh, on that wage increase moving forward? So through the chair to the rest of council, the the amount that. Uh, the invoice that we received, which was um, very sudden and abrupt, and I think that's a big part of the issue here, but it was $536,000. Um, as it's ongoing, we are currently um, seeing that uh, through our contributions. This uh, this 536 is only for uh, 2017 to March, I believe it's March 21 in retroactive costs, but the ongoing costs related to the pay increase as a result of that collective bargaining process we, we've uh, we've seen for the last two years, and we are see, continuing to see those rising costs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostasha. Councillor Haas. Yeah, and, and, and it's kind of interesting, but the day of the caucus, um, they're going into negotiations again with the RCMP because that day was the uh, the last day of the uh, of that current contract. So they're going to be going into negotiations again. Now, um, the message from our president of AM was to hold off on the payments for a while because there's still more advocacy. But I mean, because she did say that we have two years to pay it. Uh, I mean, obviously we need to plan for it. But but yeah, I mean they they suspect a small increase because of the recent one but it's just interesting they're going into into deliberations again so we'll see what comes from that councillor ostashik yes i'm i apologize sorry for going back but this because this was so sudden i guess and if you can't answer this i fully understand what's the plan moving forward then for how this is going to be brought to council for discussion I mean, I think we're all aware this is it's hugely significant. It's like equivalent to a 6% tax increase just to pay the retroactive bill. So it's going to have to be dealt with carefully and thoughtfully. Uh, thank you through the chair of the rest of council. So right now, there's definitely some advocacy that's still ongoing. I think that uh, there's a political lens to to this issue as well that council will need to be involved with. Uh, the actual financial aspect of of this decision from the federal government, 
I agree. It has to be dealt with thoughtfully. We are, we do, or there's a potential to have a united approach with the rest of the Alberta municipalities. And as of right now, the encouragement from that group is don't pay for two years. Now we need to, I, I need to be very clear that we have two years to pay. Um, my invoice says that it's due in 45 days. So it's, uh, it's unconfirmed at this point, but we are trying to sort out those types of details prior to bringing this forward to council. Uh, once we do, once those details are known, we'll have a, a much better idea on uh, the options available and how we can uh, hopefully mitigate the, the impact of, of that decision. Thank you. I can't say that I'm I'm uh, excited to see it come to council, but uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Labarge. So, um, and this is a question to CAO Panasic again. So, to be clear, I mean, the RCMP have been paid that amount. Now the federal government's coming back to the municipalities and saying, less than our debt because we paid those guys. Is that what happened here? Through the chair, that's correct. So this decision on the collective bargaining was made in 2021. Uh, that those funds, to my knowledge, have been um, have been issued to all the officers. the The decision for the last couple of years has been sitting with the federal government, and they were making a decision as to whether or not they wanted to uh, pass that cost on to municipalities, or if they wanted to absorb it with within the the advocacy position from SEM and Alberta municipalities is essentially that the federal government was negotiating with municipal dollars without having municipalities at the table. And that's part of the, the political lens uh, that our associations are going after. But um, this was just a decision that the federal government um, had to make, but it is um, these funds have already been issued to the RCMP. Council, uh, anything else before we move on to status report? Uh, CEO, uh, status report. Uh, thank you to the chair. We have, I have nothing to report. This time. Very well, thank you very much. Uh, we have nothing indicated for closed session. So council, without uh, any further ado, we're looking for Councillor Haas. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Council. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, we'll do this old-fashioned way. Council, all those in favor? <laughs>